Hello everyone. It's James again. And before I start today's video. I just want to quickly say. All work in this video contains 100% original content of and by myself James Smith, otherwise known as Begood4000, and was uniquely created with normal software, by myself James Smith. As I purchased commercial rights from normal to produce my unique and original video with this software. Commentary is uniquely my own thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Now that I have that out of the way. I do hope your day is going way better than fantastic. And your journey to self-betterment is going way better than fantastic as well. Today I wanted to talk about something very important. And that is the modern life and dating gurus and channels out there. On both sides. On both sides. And how if you want to listen to these people at all. You have to take the good that is said and extract it from the bad. Because if you don't. And you try to follow it and what they are trying to have you do. You could live a life of disappointment. Pain. And lower self-esteem. Now first I wanted to talk about from the male point of view. Simply because I'm a cartoon man. Here's the thing. There is a big big push to become successful and rich and blah blah and blah. And hey. I get it. I do think as a man that men have been pushed down a bit and not having role models these days to look up to for hard work and success. More and more young men are checking out of the workforce and more and more are checking out of school. One of the main reasons I believe that is. Is that western society has told these young men that they aren't needed and they are disposable. So either two things happen. Either they just check out. Or they go the route of trying to live the life of one of these dating modern life living gurus. And I think both extremes can and will likely lead to even lower self-esteem and feelings of self-worth. And this all ties in with narcissistic abuse. Here's the thing. I was watching one of these channels. With a couple of guys interviewing a panel of women. Talking about how to get a high value man and on and on. Well. One of the hosts asked the women. How much would a man have to make in order to not be considered a bum? And the majority of the women on this panel. Women from all walks of life mind you. Said either a million dollars a year or a half a million dollars a year. Or some other extremely high number. Now here's what I say. I think no matter men or women. Try to have the best life you can. And yes we need to earn a living in this world. And if you can figure out a way to earn an honest living where it makes you financially well to do. Then great. You possibly as a result of having said money. Be able to quit your job working for a narcissist boss. You might be able to afford better health care. And you might be able to take care of your future family better than you have ever dreamed of. The problem is this. There are men. There are men out there saying to themselves. I have to stay hidden in life. Until I make a million dollars a year. Or whatever crazy number that is in their mind. Because if I don't make that kind of money. No one will like me. And when they aren't able to produce such results. What do you think happens to their self-confidence and self-esteem? That's right it goes down. As they feel like they are worthless and have nothing to offer. The truth is. When I watch certain shows. I do hear some truths. Some. But in this type of show with this type of question and answer. I hear. Or I think. Every one of those women on that panel are women you as a man should avoid. And if you have a son. Make sure they avoid such a woman as well. And part of that is making sure you have a healthy self-esteem. That you won't be with someone that will just see you for this or that and use you. Until there is nothing left to use you for. And then they are gone and on to the next one. When you hear these ladies answers. You can hear the selfishness and narcissism freely flow. But yet. Men are supposed to be inspired by this to go out there and somehow magically make a million dollars a year to make such a woman happy. And then you have women. Good women that are confused. They are trying to find a good man. 
Do you notice most of the women gurus and men gurus don't talk anything about finding a man that believes in God? However, they talk about how a woman must lock down the richest man she can to ensure her and her future child's survival. You see. And this is something I've thought about. And I ran into a video of someone else talking about this as well. I forget the guy's name. He's got a popular channel. He was saying how if you have a woman with a man. And this man makes an average to decent living. Whatever that is where you are located. And this man is masculine. Hard working. Loves God. Loves his girlfriend or wife. And if they have children he would put himself in harm's way without thinking about it to save them. This woman is far safer with this man. Then she would be with the rich man that is trying to snake her away from this man. Or some random guy at a nightclub that is driving a Lambo. There's a high high chance. That this random man will not put the time effort and care into a relationship with this woman. Like the man she is already with that loves her. But again. Women are told over and over and over again. That if your man doesn't make this. Or he doesn't have that. He is a bum. And that hey. Why aren't you making the bag for yourself anyway? Here's how you can do it. Sign up to OF and you can make more money than you have ever dreamed up. And with each way they turn. They end up in situations that mess them up and lower their self-esteem. Let me ask you this question. These women that are on these shows and panels. Have they ever tried to or date these so-called male high-value men on the panel? I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have. Do you really think that a wonderful fruitful relationship was built? Or do you think he was using her and she was using him? And when you do all of that empty using and getting a free handbag just to hang around some rich guy that cares nothing about you at the end of the day lowers your self-esteem. And dulls your ability to love others and accept love from others. Now here's the thing. I by no means say you shouldn't have standards and boundaries. Boundaries are one of the main ways you will keep abusers and other narcissists out of your life. And one of those boundaries should be someone that does their best to take care of themselves and their life. You know. I keep using Ollie and Charlene as an example. For those of you that know Ollie and Charlene. They aren't rich. Ollie isn't rich. Yet they complement each other well. One of the main things is they understand each other well because they both grew up in narcissistic abuse. So for them. That is worth its weight in gold because they can understand where each other is coming from. Where most of us. Both men and women. We get in a relationship with someone that has never heard of narcissism or narcissistic abuse in its truest sense. And they might not understand why you don't have a relationship with your mother or father or brother or sister. They might not understand why you haven't accomplished certain things in your life. Though you have been so called working hard. They might say. Though you might indeed have been working hard. And this goes back to Ollie and Charlene. Ollie works very hard at making his content. And he's had a window cleaning business. That at first seemed to be taking off. Then it hit a big roadblock with the cost of gas eating into his profits. Something that was out of his control. They live in what appears to be a small apartment. And they don't have the things rich people have. Though he was blessed to get a really nice car a while back. But they don't appear to be rich. Does that make him a bum? Does that mean he's not so called working hard enough? It sounds crazy doesn't it? Because those that know Ollie. Know he's always trying to get over that hump to have a better life. But is Charlene better off with some rich guy at the club driving a Lambo simply for the sake of money? No. No she wouldn't be. And it seems she really sees this and knows this. When she had her accident and broke her neck. Ollie was there to care for her and do what he could to help her situation. You can tell that Ollie if he had to do it. Would put himself in harm's way to protect Charlene. Do you think the guy driving a Lambo at the club would do the same? Now here's the thing. Maybe one day Ollie will make a great living to where he can buy himself a Lambo. 
but the chances of him walking out on Charlene simply because he's rich would be extremely low in my opinion. Because giving up a woman that loves him for a woman at the club. Why? Why would he or anyone want to do that? And this goes to self-esteem and self-worth. In Ollie's genuine journey to making a better life. He knows what and who he's working hard for. You see if you think that you have to make a million dollars a year for others to like you. You have already lost. You have already lost. This is just like the kid on the playground growing up. Saying how they will be your friend if you give them your candy. Then next it will be your bike. Then next it will be your winter coat. When in reality. This kid doesn't have the ability to be friends with anyone. They are just using your desperation for love and acceptance. They are saying. Here's the price for my friendship. And if you pay that price. I will be your friend. Look. Do you want to be around someone that is toxic and doesn't care about themselves and where they are going in life? No. But. But putting a price on friendship is evil and not real friendship. And if someone puts a price on a dating relationship. Run. Because the bar of narcissistic abuse will keep moving up and up and up. Because I will tell you this. If someone sets a price on having a relationship. With them. And you act like you want to pay that price and you eventually pay that price. They will set a new price and a new price and a new price. And eventually they will discard you after you've wasted your time money and life on this evil individual. Now yes. Are these channels correct that you should get out there and do your best in life? Correct. 100% get out there and do your best. But know what and who you are doing your best for. You should be doing your best because you don't want others controlling and manipulating your life. Maybe you don't want to work for a narcissist anymore. But know if you hit snags like Ollie has hit. It doesn't mean you are a failure. Let me ask you a question. If Ollie grew up in a normal and very healthy home. Where his siblings loved him and he loved his siblings and along with his parents. And they worked hard as a family unit. Where do you think Ollie would be at right now? That's right. He would likely have several successful businesses running at the same time. The problem was he was growing up with people that were trying to throw roadblocks and monkey wrenches into everything he did. Now is this an excuse? No it's not. But life is different when you are trying to figure out life. Be successful. And have your own family trying to cause you harm at the same time. Here's what I can say. I've seen people growing up that appeared to have a healthy family home. Not perfect. But healthy. And the parents no matter if they were poor or not. Took a strong interest in their children's talents and life desires. Guess what happens to some of these people when they grew up into adults? They became overwhelmingly successful at their talents. To where they either have great careers. Jobs. Or they work for themselves. And I will use Ollie again as an example. He's extremely smart. He's extremely smart. And he works very hard. I believe it would be a lie to say if he came from a great family he would be in the same spot. Because I don't believe that for a second. I'm sure he would be ten times further up the road where he wants to be if that makes sense. And this is the legacy of narcissistic abuse. Your family abuses you growing up. But if you talk about it or even look at it for what it is. You are a complainer. And thus people don't want to talk about it. And narcissists continue doing what they do to people. And I say that as a person that tries my best to not make excuses for myself. Much like Ollie. I work very hard at my life. And I don't stop. And I'm thankful that God made me a fighter in life. To where I won't give up trying. And I believe he made you the same way as well. Because most of us that grew up as the scapegoat of the home we grew up in. We are fighters in the sense we never give up. Yes we have down moments. But somewhere along the line we hear God's voice again telling us to stand. And to not give up. And what I want you to do is look at that quality about yourself.
both man and woman. This is something to be proud about and to have self-esteem and good thoughts about yourself. You have been put through worst and you are still going. How many people can do what you have done? And if you do get so called rich. Or you make a million dollars. You will make the right choices with your life. Because you will know what a narcissist is capable of. And what a narcissist looks like. Because they can look like anyone. They can look like anyone. Same with you ladies. There is nothing. Nothing wrong with finding a rich man if that's God's desire for you. But. But is this so much of a focus for you that you can't see who's a narcissist and who's not? Please remember both men and women out there. God has made people rich and God has taken all of their riches away. And there are stories of this in the Bible. Do you think when it's all said and done? That God is going to ask you how much money you made or how many people you impressed? Or if you not only treated yourself with love, but you treated others with love as well? Did you walk away from that person that meant you no good? And did you listen to God speaking to you to go and be with this person that did mean well for you and your life? Did you listen to God? Did you listen? Look we are living in some strange times. A time where if you can't produce insanely crazy results for your life. You are told you aren't worth to be friends with. You aren't worth to date. And you aren't worth to marry. Nothing about your relationship with God. Nothing about how you treat yourself. Nothing about how you treat others. Please both men and women out there. Do not let your self-worth and self-esteem be based on these people and such things promoted on these channels. Yes. It's good to possibly hear what they have to say to get a pulse on what is happening around you. And yes. They might have a great point or two. But take that point or two for what it's worth. And understand that most of the things these people are saying and doing aren't practical and aren't real for the masses of people out there. With that said. Yes. Do your best. Celebrate the small victories. And if you fall down keep on trying. And only let those in your life that see the value of you. Not what luxury item you can buy them. Remember God loves you and God is with you always. With that said. I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.